Hi, in uh, today's video I'm actually going to cover a very simple SSIS task that I used recently. Uh, if you've been following my blog post you'll know that I've recently published a blog post where I've kind of explained how you can export your contact information from LinkedIn and uh, import it into a CSV or a database uh, so that you can actually do some an analysis on top of it. Now while doing that particular activity I found out that uh, people use different designations uh, or different terms for their designation. For example, you have some people who are called database architects, some who would be called, called a solution architect, so or some who would just be architects. So essentially all these may mean the same, so I wanted a way to kind of normalize this information. And uh, the way I've done it is using the uh, the fuzzy grouping logic inside SSIS packages. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of show you today. So uh, the first thing obviously would be to get an, get an idea about the data. So you'll see here that uh, I've gone ahead and imported the LinkedIn data. So you'll see that I've got first name, last name, email ID. And uh, you'll see that I've got the company, the title. And then I've added two new columns. The first one is an identity column mainly for my primary key. And the second one, the clean title, is basically going to start off as a blank field which I will update later with normalized information for uh, titles. So the idea being that if you see here right now you'll see that my normalized titles enterprise architect is enterprise solutions architect and associate database architect is associate database architect. So there is uh, some amount of standardization required here. So the way to do that is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group by logical terms of the job title to find out terms that are similar to each other and then kind of give them a common name at the very beginning. So the way to do that is if you see here I've got my SSIS package uh, up and running or open here and what I start off with is a data flow task. So uh, if I come into my uh, package here I'll go ahead drag and drop a data flow task and inside my data flow task I will add a source which in this case is going to be my SQL Server database. I open it up, I establish a connection and the table that I'm looking for is contacts out of which I'm really interested only in the company, title, clean title and ID. In fact I really don't need company at this moment but I'm just putting it in there. So once I press OK I've got a list of the columns that I need from the table. The next thing is to actually do the fuzzy grouping. So when I want to do the fuzzy grouping what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go ahead from here you can see that we've got other transforms from there I'm going to pick uh, fuzzy grouping drag and drop it and connect the source to the fuzzy grouping and open it up. Uh, now this is again the same table so you'll see that it just picks up the same connection and then from the comp uh, from the columns the column that I want to do the grouping on is actually the job title so that's what I'm going to check here on the left hand side but I still want to pass through all the remaining uh, columns to the destination so that's what I'm doing here. Now once I've done this, the next thing for me to do is to kind of set a score for similarity. Now the higher similarity you choose, the less groupings you get. So, uh, I mean, the more groupings you get, so it, the data doesn't really standardize or normalize. And uh, what you probably want to do is look at your information, look at your data, and try to predict what would be a decent amount of similarity that you can look for. So I tried 80 and it wasn't good enough so I reduced it to 70. In my case it was more trial and error but in most cases you'll actually be able to do some kind of prediction in terms of uh, how similar the data is. Uh, one way to achieve that would be using the data profiler task which actually has pattern matching or regex available in it which will give you an idea in terms of how similar the data is typically, go typically going to be. Uh, you'll also notice that we have some delimiters here in terms of how to identify one character from the other. So uh, I'm choosing 70 at this moment and I'll press OK. Because now that we've got the fuzzy grouping done here is uh, the next thing that we want to do is we actually need to go ahead and take the output of the fuzzy grouping and update the column that we just inserted. The column in this case being the uh, the clean title. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use an OLEDB command so that I can update row by row uh, the data for every fuzzy grouping. So I'll just connect this guy to the OLEDB destination, choose a connection manager like before and here I'm going to write in my command. So in my case it's going to be update contacts set clean title which uh, I guess is supposed to be one word equal to question mark which is again the reason uh, we use question mark is because we've got uh, an OLEDB command here. Right, so it's clean underscore title is equal to question mark 
where ID equal to question mark. So the first parameter is going to be the clean title and the second parameter is going to be the ID. So now that I know this update statement expects two parameters, I'll press OK, go to column mappings and I'll tell it that the first parameter expects the clean title which comes from the fuzzy grouping logic and the second parameter expects the ID which is being passed through from the first uh, fuzzy grouping logic that we have here. Alright, so the clean title is basically, you can see your group output is job title clean. So that's basically what I want. So I'm sorry, let me just come here. I should have this guy here, which is called job title clean. That's the clean title that I want to use. Yeah. So the job title clean and the ID are the two input parameters for my update statement. Now to see how this works, I'll go ahead and put a data viewer in the middle, just so that we can see uh, how this task behaves. So I'll go ahead and execute this. And when I do that, you'll see that there's a similarity score. So where it's one, it's basically essentially the same word as it is. But you'll also see that in some cases like here, we've got solution architect with similarities ranging from 0.93 to uh, 0.77. Uh, you'll also see that we've got senior BI development manager as well as senior development BI development manager and database developer, right? Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see that we've got uh, Senior SQL Database Administrator. Quite a few of them. They're all grouped together as one. Uh, you got... Uh, no, let's see. Application Development Consultant. You got Technical Team Leads. Associate Vi Vice President. So you'll see here that in this case, the similarity is still too close to really kind of do high level bucketing that I wanted so you'll see here for example senior software engineer is marked as engineer whereas here senior software engineer is treated separately so I need to refine this so what I'll do is I'll just come back to my package yeah and I'll choose a slightly lower similarity threshold It's at 70, so I'll make it, let's say, 60. And let's run this again. And when I open this up now, you'll see that we've got a job title, which is called senior solutions architect as well as solutions architect and you can see both of them once cleaned show up as solution architect and the same thing goes for lead solution architect as well which also shows up now as solution architect so it's getting better now you'll see that we've got solution architect so all these guys now actually roll up to the one title called solution architect which makes a lot more sense from uh, our standpoint the key thing to keep in mind here is that you'll also notice that there are some other uh, problems that we're facing here in terms of owner is typically meant to be the founder of the company whereas senior product owner is a completely different title altogether so it doesn't really understand the difference between the uh, job titles it's doing this aggregations purely based on uh, the actual word that it sees so while it's not perfect it will actually get you started in terms of being able to normalize or standardize your data uh, you'll see ag here again we've got software engineer and senior software engineer which all combines together as uh, software engineer so this is how you want to use the fuzzy grouping logic. It's uh, very useful. I've used it recently for some healthcare projects where we wanted to group different diagnostic codes based on uh, the, uh, the the part of the body that uh, the diagnosis uh, works for. For example, neurology, nephrology, cardiology. So uh, where we look for these words, we essentially take nephrology and bind it with a keyword like kidney or cardiology with heart and uh, that way we were able to bucket uh, common diseases by the organ that it's associated with so these are some of the kind of stuff that you can do with uh, fuzzy grouping obviously it's purely uh, driven by the data that you work with uh, I hope this video has been useful and uh, thanks for watching